Hi, I'm Alistair Benn and welcome to Expressive Photography. In this week's video, I want to talk about composition. Uh, don't turn off yet. I want to talk about composition in a new way. I want to get to the root of what is composition when it comes to photography and how we can make our compositions better immediately. Now, before we get to that, you may notice I'm wearing a Canadian t-shirt. Uh, I have been in Canada for the entire second half of May and into June. I ended up uh, staying a week or 10 days longer because I contracted COVID at the end of my stay. In fact, the day I was due to fly home. I was running some workshops with Adam Gibbs on Vancouver Island. And then I was the keynote speaker at the Light Chasers Conference 2023 in Pincher Creek, Alberta, which was an incredible incredible event. Um, so I am just back from Canada. I'm finally home. Um, we're going to be taking a couple of weeks break from videos. I'm going to take a short vacation with my wife and we're taking my mother away as well. Um, I'm still recovering from COVID, which is why I'm kind of run down and so forth. But in today's topic, I am super excited to talk to you about composition. Um, what is composition? Well, if you think about um, other types of composition, musical composition, we start with nothing and add things. So we start with silence and we add one note or a chord or uh, various notes and chords, melodies, beats, basses, drums. We add things to silence to make a composition that becomes music. With the landscape, and this is one of the arguments about composition or why landscape photography isn't art, um, the argument is, is that everything that there is in a composition is already out there and we just have to point our camera at it. And what I want to demonstrate in using a couple of photos as examples is that, yes, there are things out there, but they don't instantly lend themselves to be compositions. Uh, if we start and <laughs> if these photographs look a little bit odd to you, it's just because um, the Fuji GFX 100S uh, does record the full frame, but that is not what I photographed in the field. I'm just showing the full frame because the full frame isn't the composition, if that makes sense. This is the little fairy tree uh, on Vancouver Island. And during the workshops, we went to this place. And for such a famous little tree, um, it can be surprisingly difficult to actually compose something that kind of captures the spirit of it and, and shows it to its best. There's a lot of foreground bushes in the way. There's not many different places that you can stand to get a good view. And as you can see in this scene here, this is the fairy tree here and it's in the middle of a lake and, you know, it, it is what it is. Obviously, when it's calm like this, we get some nice reflections and it's a really pleasant scene. When the wind is up and it starts to get ripply, it gets more, com uh, more complex, there's no reflections. So the elements that are present at the time that we are there are obviously going to contribute to the type of photographs that we can make. Now, if I do go to the, the, the cropped version of this, so basically if I go down to now as shot, you can see that I was cutting slices of the landscape, which is something I do uh, on a fairly regular basis. But if we go back to the original here, where I found my uh, brain engaging with this scene was understanding that the fairy tree is the subject, you know, that that is the the thing that is the obvious thing in the frame to photograph, I think. And if you go to famous locations to photograph an icon, then you're going to photograph the icon. We can see here that it's in shade and that the background is brighter than the foreground. So what we have is all of these reflected trees are brighter and actually quite dynamic and all of these areas are brighter than the actual subject itself or the thing that we want to highlight and all of this stuff in the foreground all these brighter areas and we were obviously running a workshop and I wasn't taking very many photographs but one of the guys came up to me and said how do you photograph scenes you know how do you find your compositions and I the spontaneously came up with a little expression which is point your camera at the cool and then eliminate everything that isn't cool. 
And that is the message that I want you to take away from this video today is point your camera at the cool and eliminate everything that isn't cool. <laughs> it might sound a little new age and a little bit hippie. One of the things with this scene is that your place in space is really, really important. As I said, you're limited uh, in terms of access views because of uh, brush that's grown up and so forth. So you are somewhat limited with where you can stand and where you can isolate this tree from. Uh, from this side, we are isolating the tree against a more even background. However, in this scene here, you can see, and this again is a full frame, this isn't what I photographed and we'll get to that in a moment, but you can see here the reflection becomes part of, or becomes silhouetted against the sky. Now there's various ways of addressing this situation, but if we come back to the expressive photography foundations of luminosity, contrast, color, geometry, and atmosphere as being the draw, the power, let's look at some various ways that we can eliminate the uncool in this scene to keep the cool. So the first option is to look at something like a square and just pull this down and end up with something in this type of area. Now, obviously with the Fuji GFX 100S, I've got 102 megapixels to play with, so I can make some pretty significant crops. Um, and what this does quite successfully is isolate the tree and create a more simple composition. We've eliminated a whole bunch of stuff and the more stuff that we eliminate, the easier it is for the, for the point of the photograph to become clear. And I think that's really what composition is to me, is we're making a point. We're saying, this is cool, and I've eliminated all the uncool stuff, and all I'm leaving you with is the cool stuff. Now, of course, every pixel in a frame is important. We can't stick a post-it note over an area and say, don't look here. So you can see there's a little shadow down in that bottom left-hand corner. The way this line uh, interacts with the frame edge, this greeny up in the top corner here. So we might need to fine tune this composition a little bit more, somewhere like in there. And we're starting to get to that gist. Now, obviously the roles of color are very important in this, you know, the blue sky, the green, and we may quickly find that some form of black and white composition may go some way. And if I use the yellow filter here, I'll quickly just fix that uh, black point and add some luminosity to there and turn the lights out. We now have a rendition of this scene that's much more concise. We've certainly got rid of a lot of the uncool. If I make a virtual copy and just reset the scene. So we're back now to our full frame. Aspect ratios, like I've said in previous videos, are incredibly important. That square is very concise, but the bottom of the scene, the, the, the way the silhouette interacts with that luminosity there, there's, it doesn't feel very balanced to me. It, it's almost as if I want to, I, I don't feel comfortable in this scene. So another way to look at this is to go to the how I shot it. No, that's weird. That should have... Right, so that is closer to the scene that I took in camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fine tune that so this 65 by 24 aspect ratio that I use quite regularly now, this X-pan panoramic um, aspect ratio, what this has enabled me to do is to isolate the tree away from the reflection. And what we've taken away is a large chunk of luminosity, that big bright section at the bottom of the frame. And what that's done is it's allowed this... Um, 
the tree and the luminosity at the top of the little, I think it's a hemlock actually, uh, this, this little tree here, it allows that to be more evident. So if I darken this image, we can see that the luminosity, and so what I'll do is I'll just pull that right down until it gets quite, quite bare. And then I'm going to increase the whites and the highlights in there and maybe just a touch more luminosity on that side. And what that's done is changed the balance between the luminosity on the left hand side of the frame and the right hand side. The reflections are now darker than the subject. Not a word I'm massively keen on, but let's just use that as a convention. So what we managed to do now is isolate something in a slightly more abstract form. We've taken it out of that big picture. We've taken it out of its context. We've, we've cropped away the uncool. And the aspect ratio, that big expansive panoramic aspect ratio, that has allowed a feeling of expansiveness. It just feels like a much more grand scene, a much bigger scene. And this is why panos are such powerful tools when it comes to emphasizing space and openness. I am going to do a little bit of fiddling around with the white balance of this scene, just warming it a little bit. And I think I might just go into the HSL and play around with the hue a fraction here just to warm up some of those tones and then I'll come in with some color grading and I think I'll go into the shadows here and again using this I don't know if you're too familiar with this color grading I like to find a really saturated tone that kind of magenta blue and then pull it back to reduce that saturation and then with the highlights, I think I'll go in this quite bright, warm yellowy color. And I think I can actually increase the contrast in this a little more. And there we have it. So by removing the uncool from this scene and allowing the the key components, the, the more important content, the cool of the composition to sit in the frame in a much more powerful manner. By removing all those distractions, it becomes very clear what this photograph is about. This little tree growing out of the cut off, uh, you know, the logged uh, old growth tree. Removing the cool is the best way of making your compositions more concise we can look at any scene and probably find a more uh, rational or condensed version of it. So in summary, point you, where you live in space, so just moving a few meters left or right, or even a few millimeters left or right, or up or down is going to change your perspectives and how the content interacts with all of the stuff around it. Compositions do not exist in nature. Uh, the world is not just there waiting for you to point your camera at already perfectly composed scenes. That is not how the world works. Our position in space, given any particular moment in time, is really, really important. And that's what makes landsp landscape photography such a powerful tool for our personal expression. There was nine people on this workshop, plus Adam and myself. There was 11 people photographing that little tree on that particular morning. And we all came away with different photographs, different perspectives, different ways of expressing ourselves. I am just gonna quickly look at a second scene here, uh, just to, to cover one more thing. I was very drawn by these beautiful reflections, you know, just the way the, the, the soft, uh, almost perfectly calm water was kind of abstracting reality. And again, the way I addressed this was to go in and take out um, a slice of that. So this would be the, the slice of the landscape that I photographed at the time. 
and I think I was using a, a film simulation to make it look even more vibrant and even more saturated giving myself a huge amount of feedback in the field to make myself feel great about what I was pointing my camera at. And then when it came to process this, and I did it just a couple of days ago, I actually turned the whole thing upside down and created uh, a much more abstract and otherworldly image. And I think this is just a really good example of how you can go into a, an ordinary place, uh, for, for whatever that means, and make images that are different and abstract and thought-provoking and curious and playful and imaginative, uh, creative, I suppose, would be the word, but certainly expressive. And this is the point of the Expressive Photography Channel. It's the point of all the ebooks that I write and the forum that I run, the Expressive Photography Forum, is to provide a platform for people to be expressive because that is not something that social media is particularly fond of. They prefer likes and popularity. Uh, before we close today, a couple of things that are worth mentioning. Adam Gibbs and I, uh, dear friends that we are, the feedback we got from the workshop was that, or both the workshops, was that people had an incredible time. That was true also from the two workshops that we ran in Spain in January of this year. If you would like to join myself and Adam Gibbs, then there are going to be increasingly numbers, increasing numbers of opportunities for you to do so. We will be running some more trips in Canada in the spring of 2024. There are also some spaces still available in January for the Spain workshops. Uh, we have two dates. The first one has four spots available. The second one only has one spot available. Uh, if you would love to join us in Spain or Canada, jump over to the Express Photography website and check out our workshop offerings. Uh, the Canadian ones aren't up on the website yet, but join our newsletter to be one of the first to be notified of those new dates that are going to be released pretty soon. We are also going to be running a workshop in Namibia together, uh, which is a new location for me. Adam was there this spring uh, and just raved about it. So Adam and I are going to be running a workshop in Namibia, hopefully in March 2024. If any of those things sound interesting to you, jump over to the website and either check out what's already on the website or subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, apart from that, hopefully this little primer on composition has got you thinking. Point your camera at the cool and remove everything that isn't cool. That's my recommendation for today. Thank you very much for watching. We are going to be taking a short break for the next couple of weeks, so there will not be any videos on YouTube for the next two weeks. Uh, but when we get back in July, I look forward to catching up with you all again. And uh, I hope you're having a great summer wherever you are. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.